it doesn't come. Maybe I'm not the only one. Maybe those situations happen to someone else in here as well. But to me, those experiences in prayer made me ask, are my prayers really heard? Didn't he promise that if we ask, it will be given? If we knock, the door will be opened. But why doesn't it seem to work for me? Did that happen to you as well? Well, for me, most of the time. At first, those moments formed a bit of fear in me. The fear of being disappointed by God. For your information, I've been raised and trained in an Adventist home, though it didn't really hit the ideal Adventist family. We've been taught how We've been taught about how great God is, how loving He is, how perfect, how powerful. In short, there is no impossible in Him. And I want to believe that. It really amazes me. But when I became more mature, I guess, I started to want to prove Him. Is God real? Can He really do those things that they are saying about Him? If yes, then I want to be proud of the God that I, that I serve. I want to be closer to Him. I was expecting to be like Moses when he prayed the Red Sea was divided. I want to be like David when he prayed strength from God was given to kill the giant. I want, I want to be like Elijah when he prayed fire from heaven came down. I want to be like those great men of prayer in the Bible when they prayed the power of God is seen. But with those failing experiences in prayer, how can I testify that God is powerful indeed? That would be a shame, knowing that I am an Adventist, the people of God, the true church, and his prayers are not heard. That's a shame, and I fear it. To defend the promise, I heard someone's reason, maybe it's not his will, with the corresponding verses from 1 John 5.14, if we ask anything according to his will. That's right, but to me, that sounded like God doesn't really care about what I want, and even what I need for the moment. For he only cares about what he wants, his will. And if that is the case, then why bother to plead with God or even try to become specific on asking if the only prayer that he likes to hear is according to what he wants? To me, that sounded like the only prayer available for supplication part is, let your will be done. Because if I ask something that happens to be not according to his will, it will not be answered anyway. That's what I thought. Little by little, my fear is slowly changed to bitterness, while all the time remaining as an Adventist. Yes, I was still praying, but my attitude towards my petition is, would he really give it? Would he really answer it? Like I'm trying to prove him. In other words, I am doubting. But the worst part in all of these things is the fact that it happens to me subconsciously. I am not aware of it. Do you have defects that you're not aware of? I thought I am trusting God because I know I must trust Him. But there's a difference between knowing and applying, theory and practice. Some of my friends, especially in my small group, may have known me as a man who loves to study the Word of God, a man who is close to God, a leader, a theologian, and that is what I thought as well. I love the topics about character building, about the nature of Christ, about the unity in the church, but not about prayer. I don't have many good things to share about that topic. And just like what I said, I didn't notice that I have a hypocritical attitude towards prayer. And I must admit, I wasn't really impressed nor excited when I saw the tarpaulin posted there at Rotonda, Nice for Jesus. I was thinking like, same topic again? I have heard already those sermons about prayer, like talking to God as to a friend, uh, do's and don'ts in praying, the Acts pattern. I know all of those. But God indeed is working in a very unexpected way. Just the week before the Nice for Jesus started, I had a chat with Hazel Akupan regarding the outreach program of small groups. And I can't remember how, but the topic was changed to the Nice, of, nice for Jesus event. I remember asking her what's new with the program, po pointing out that the revival series uh, about prayer was done already here for so many times, like the 10 days of prayer, those prayer marathons. I can't remember what she said, but my heart was stirred up with interest with her promotion. And then she prayed. The first night came, I wasn't able to come. Second night, 
I came, I heard prayer is not about you, it's about God, Pastor Rakata said. And it, that sounds like not your will, not my will, but your will again. And Sabbath morning, the best prayer, I fell asleep in the middle of the sermon. AY, we cooked at the house of one of our sponsors. It took so long that we weren't able to attend. But during the sundown, the final topic, the Holy Spirit moved me in a very special way. My eyes were opened when Pastor Ekata repeatedly stated, God can answer your prayer, but will he save you? At the back of my mind, a thought was formed. That will, that will, God's will, that he wants me to pray for, his will is to save me. It is the will of God to redeem me from my sin. And how skeptical I am to think that God is somehow selfish because it is his will and not mine that he wants to fulfill. But, that's, but that will that he's been insisting is to save me. His will is for me. Oh, what a loving God. I remember the verse in Psalms 139, 17, 18. How precious also are your thoughts to me, O God. How great is the sum of them. If I should count them, they would be more in number than the sand. When I awake, I am still with you. Indeed, God is never selfish. When Pastor Ikata finished and asked everyone to pray, I, pr I prayed feeling so guilty and embarrassed before God. I can't help it, but tears just fell down from my eyes. And all of those unsettled bitterness were opened before me by a spirit, and I realized how childish those thoughts are. And as I say those, sorry, forgive me, I know I want to do something for God. So when the program ended, one of the coordinators announced about the meeting for AUP for Jesus program, asking for everyone who wants to contribute, 5 a.m. in Sunday morning. I decided to come. I joined as one of the speakers during the worship period in every dorm. And as I ponder upon it, I realized that those prayers that God didn't answer were actually for my good. As a matter of fact, he gave me a better answer. It's too, it's too many to mention, but I want you to know that I have never been so grateful to God as now. I praise God for the knees of Jesus that happened to be the instrument for my first personal revival. Right now, it has been a struggle to be speaking about prayer in some dorms, knowing that I have had a bad testimony about it. But every time I feel the guilt and the unworthiness, you know what my, my weapon is? Prayer. And God gives me relief. And today, my prayer life has changed in a very special way. It is easier, a lot easier, way, way easier to trust him now. And before I end, I just want to read a quotation from Ellen White, Signs of the Times, December 17, 1902. We should not present our petitions to God in order to prove whether, whether he will fulfill his word but because he will fulfill it. May all be blessed.